Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. A couple of products, um, I don't know if it's not set out very well, but I'm just going to give you a real quick look at this product. This one came over, my, over the bench today, and I thought it was well worth a look because this product's really handy. Uh, there's not a lot of other things out there like it that are this easy to fit and do this type of work. What it is, is it's a door alarm, and this door alarm is fitted to emergency fire exits. The reason they put these out there is because they don't want people using these emergency fire exits, propping them open, using them to go out there and smoke, or leaving them open so that people can work their way back into the building by the door being uh, not secured or not locked. So by opening the door, the alarm sounds. It's fitted to the top of the door, as you can see just there. Uh, it uses a little reed switch, and when the actual alarm is triggered, it does quite a loud, um, loud burst of a siren sound. There's two different configurations here. I'm not sure why we've got two, but I thought it'd be a good idea just to have a look at it. They're not a very expensive device, but they do do a particular purpose. They are battery powered and uh, they last so long, then you change the battery and that's about it. Hopefully nobody kind of goes through there because this will be a good deterrent. But anyway, I'm going to just quickly show you what's inside the boxes here. Two models we're looking at, STI 3600 and this one here. STI 4600. I have no idea what the difference is. That's why I thought it'd be a good idea just to give you a quick look to show you what's in this box. They are available on our website, which is drlock.com.au. And um, yeah, I thought it'd be a good idea. I get to see them for the first time, and, and so do you. So here's our instructions here. Um, works on a 9 volt DC alkaline battery. That's fairly standard. Uh, 95 decibels, so that's uh, fairly loud. Uh, dimensions 136 by 5.35, so 136 or 5.3 inches, and about 50 mil high approximately. Shows you how to connect uh, the reed switch. Shows you how it's fitted to to the door. Some of them you can use two reed switches, so for double doors and things like that. Um, here it's a simple diagram. Looks like you mount the the mounting plate, and then you come through with the four screws, go straight over the top. It's got a hook slot, so fairly straightforward, nothing on the back. Okay, so here is our magnet. Here's our magnet. We've got some wall plugs there, a um, couple of keys, which are cargo keys there. So you can actually turn it off before you open the door if you wanted to. Here's the product itself. You've got your uh, wire coming away from the, the actual device. Let's look at how it's fitted to the door. Okay, so there we are. There, the, the actual complete shell looks like it clips over the top, and there should be some way of actually attaching. Okay, there we go. You can see there uh, that's a, a metal threaded screw. So there's one on that side. There's an under under hook here. So you would uh, put it over the top here, and then bring the casing down like so. So you would hook it in this side and then bring it down over the top like so and then put your one screw in the side to um, to secure it so that's to secure the housing you got four holes here that would be for the footprint as you can see it's just a it's just a circuit board with a screamer key switch to isolate it alkaline battery on the side not a very uh, good battery I must say well, I think we'll swap that to a Duracell before we get started that's the back of it there so one, two, three, four, you would simply put that up against your door, screw, 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 line up your cutout, put that over the top, slide it down, put your one screw in on the side, and um, go ahead and fit your reed switch. Looking at the reed switch, it's got quite a lot of wire on it. I mean, I don't see, if you wanted to, you could actually shorten this, um, or even just tuck it probably even in the casing. Probably get away with tucking a fair bit of that, putting the lid straight back on. It's not going to hurt it. It's only low voltage. Here's the fastenings that are included. Uh, we've got some tool here. What's this tool for? STI tool. What is that tool for? That, that's interesting. They've given us a metal tool here, which I cannot identify what it would do. There is some jumper plugs here too, they're mentioning. Low volume. Okay, so there's a jump plug here. You can set your volume. You can see that jump plug right there. So if you want to make it a little bit quieter, you can. Oh, okay. This 
screw, sorry, this tool right here is for the security screw. And the security screw is here, if you can see that. That's a security screw right there. It's basically just a notch out of a, a mushroom screw and you use this tool, preventing people from being able to use a normal screwdriver to get the device off, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that was the 6300. What's the difference between the 6400? besides the box. They put more work into the box on this one. They got some images on the on the front. Nicely packed. Different language instructions. Okay, so different kind of packing here. The reed switches look like they're red. In there I can see a magnet and I can see some shims used to lift the reed switch up to the desired height. You can see a couple of uh, double-sided Chicago keys there used to bypass the siren if you want to go outside. Uh, once again the STI screwdriver used for the for the housing securing. We've got the rest of the wood screws with a Phillips head and they've included some wall wall anchors there as well, some wall plugs. Oh key ring. You get a key ring with this one. That's cool. A little freebie. Ah here's something we didn't see in the other one. We've got our quick start instructions there. We have some stickers here. Um, and looks like we're in different languages too. Alarm. Look, yes, usable, but not the best. I mean, they look like you just peel off a line of them and put it on the door. Might not be very visible. Okay, so here's the product once again. That's the back. Here's that side screw. This is what it looks like fully assembled. So let's use their screwdriver to undo that because we would like to actually see the mechanism inside and also we're not seeing any wire coming off it as far as um, reed switch so perhaps the reed switch is already mounted inside this case on this uh, 6400 let's have a quick look at that okay can we get this apart there we go okay so on this model here reed switch is inbuilt um, here it is right here. It doesn't look to be glued on, so if you wanted to, you might be able to lift it out. It doesn't look to be glued on. It looks to be pressed in with these two right here. The wire, they've added extra wire, so I'm guessing if you wanted to, you could flick that out. Big difference here on the circuit board. Um, you've got dip switches, which is interesting. Battery, battery is included, but not connected. Uh, energizer battery this time, which is a better solution. So, a bit of a different um, setup. I would like to know if this reed switch is removable, and I'm just going to get a little screwdriver here to see if I can prise that up. Because if you don't have a flat place, you might actually need to move that. I hope I'm not going to. Oh, there we go. I knew it comes off. Okay, there we are. There's our reed switch. So you could um, mount it with the reed switch on top and then mount this straight up to it. Um, you'll get a contact. Maybe when you connect the battery, it might even show when it's got contact and not got contact. So that's, um, that, that's one option. Uh, let, let's hook up the battery now and let's see if that actually does work. Because it would be nice to know when you're fitting it, if you can actually see if the device is getting contact or not and I, I reckon it would okay that, that's loud it annoyed every bird in my neighborhood okay so let's put the magnet next to it now let's try again Okay, so we've got nothing. Okay. So the magnet should be sitting there and then we should not be getting any... Um, so that's closing the circuit there. We should not be making any sound. Okay, we've got power. Okay, so no... Now, the, now they're all connected. Nothing should be happening as soon as we break this. It should uh, make a sound when we reconnect it. Hopefully it should turn it off. This must be able to set the control of when it will actually do that. So let's try one more time. 
and it doesn't turn off straight away so it's definitely going to make a noise let's see if these dip switches allow us to set the length of the time choose your setting refer to the switches table below um, do not touch so it doesn't really so far tell us oh okay uh, switch settings army immediate army after 15 seconds trip imminent um, shut shut off base okay so you can basically set it with these with these ones here and at the moment we've got all of them off 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 so the one I would probably want to enable is um, turn the alarm off after a short period of time of it sounding so that's one I'll be looking at but anyway that's a product this is a 6400 you heard it going uh, very similar to the other 6300 we had a look at just a moment ago not a bad product quickly throw it on the door quick to install looks pretty good and they are available from drlock.com.au so that was the first time I've looked at one first time you've looked at one and um, from what I've seen they have been around now for some time and there is quite a number of people actually fitting these to doors and fire doors so I thought it's time we got one and had a look and I'm probably going to install one this afternoon okay thanks for watching